feeling, Oliver? So, Oliver fans, we have some news, which is that Oliver had surgery yesterday. He's now wearing this fancy collar, which is from Kong. We are not being sponsored by Kong. It's called a Kong Cloud. I guess you could say he's ready to go maybe for a swim, although he doesn't really like swimming. Uh, it's a nice life preserver. It actually is full of air. Or maybe you're going on a flight, and that's your uh, pillow for when you want to fall asleep in an airline seat. But uh, yeah, he can't go on planes either. He's too big. But yeah, here we are. Uh, let me get to the point, which is that he had surgery yesterday. So Wayne, if you want to bring the camera up, let's take a look at the spots where Oliver had surgery. So um, he had two growths removed. One that uh, I think most of you are aware of, or uh, it was the growth that was on his right front leg. And then there was another growth that we hadn't ever mentioned to you, but that we had been aware of for a while. How long do you think it's been there, Wayne? This is the growth on his tail. For several years. For several years at least. And it was really small at first when we first noticed it, and our vet said not to worry about it. Um, it wasn't bothering him, but it has started to bother him recently. Now, just to get this out of the way, right up front, neither of these growths are cancerous. They've both been tested. They're both completely harmless. The one on his tail was a keratin cyst, which means a cyst full of hair cells and bacteria. So not particularly nice, but definitely not cancerous. And then the one up here um, was also a cyst. This um, one you're more familiar with seeing, and we've mentioned it before in a couple of live streams, and also completely harmless. So uh, what happened over the past few weeks is that the tail cyst, the cyst on Oliver's tail, started to grow bigger. And I think we probably started noticing that a couple months ago, but maybe three weeks ago, Oliver was really bothered by it. Clearly, he was licking, he started licking it a lot and Oliver. constantly licking it. Want some lunch? Um, it seemed to possibly be causing him pain. We couldn't tell because Oliver, of course, can't tell us when he's feeling pain. Uh, but we noticed that it had grown a lot bigger and it seemed to be inflamed. So we took him to the vet. Now, we're in the Bay Area this year, so we couldn't take him to our usual vet um, who's been seeing him for years in Chicago. Uh, so we took him to a vet that we saw once before last time we were in the Bay Area. And um, she said, well, let's test the tail growth, the growth on his tail to make sure it's not cancer. So she took a little sample out of it for a biopsy. And then she said something that surprised me. She said, I really think we should remove it because it's bothering him. And because of the location, because it's on his tail, and his tail is so slender, um, they actually shaved the tail, at, at, and I got to see how slender it was. Uh, it's almost just like a thick cord. It's really, really much more narrow than you would ever think when you see it with all the fur on. She said, I don't think we'll be able to remove the tail growth without amputating his tail at that point. Now that was halfway along the tail. So um, that would mean that he would only have half of his tail because they would have to obviously amputate it where the, a little bit above where the growth was. He would still have a little bit of white, but his tail would basically be the brown part, which you can't see because it's all covered by a bandage, but you'll know from other videos, the brown part, and then a little bit of the white, but not the rest of the white. So that was um, quite a blow, I have to say. And uh, when we came home from that vet appointment, I just, I just completely broke down and started crying. I almost want to cry right now. I was just bawling. I mean, Wayne was a little bit worried about me, actually. I was crying so much. I mean, why was I crying? Obviously, losing half of Oliver's tail isn't the same thing as losing Oliver. We still have Oliver. We still love him just as much, even if he only had half of a tail. But I, you know, I just love his tail so much, his perky tail, and it's the way that he shows joy. It's the way he shows us how happy he is, and I just couldn't bear the thought of never seeing that again. So Wayne suggested, look, while we're waiting for the results of the biopsy to come back, why don't we take him to another vet and see what a different vet has to say? So we actually ended up going to a couple of other vets, and one of the vets that we met with said that she thought that she might be able to save the tail. So she thought we could try an operation where she would remove the growth, and then um, the problem is there's not enough skin, so she couldn't suture it. There's really very little skin to, to fold over. So he would have what's called a defect on the top of his tail, which would be an area without skin, but over time, something that she called a granular bed would form. I would take several weeks, 
a whole month probably, a sort of scarring and scab to emerge and eventually skin might grow over the tail to repair the wound. And dogs are amazing. If you can do that, I mean, humans often have skin grafts. We, they don't do that with dogs, but Oliver, that's what we ended up doing. So the results of the biopsy came back negative. Of course, if they had been positive and this had been cancerous, the tail amputation would have had to go forward to protect him. But um, fortunately, they came back negative. So uh, we went ahead with uh, the vet who offered to do this more minimal surgery of just removing the growth. And that happened yesterday. And he's doing really, really great so far. It is going to be a long recovery. For this one here, because they were able to remove the growth. Oh, she advised, by the way, all the vets we met with advised, look, if you're having one growth removed, you might as well have both removed. This one could also end up inflamed at some point. It could grow so much that it'd be even harder to remove. So, um, and this one is actually much easier to deal with because there's a, a plenty of skin available there. Uh, enough skin that she was able to suture it. So actually he's going to get this bandage removed on Monday, but uh, we're going to have to keep changing the bandages on his tail for uh, about a month and wait for the healing to happen. And sadly, I have to say it's possible that it, the, it won't actually heal. So we're not completely out of the woods. We're really hoping to save his tail and to keep his tail. Um, you know, I, when <laughs> it just hit me so hard, just the thought of not having him with his tail. Um, we love him very much with, with a half a tail, a full tail, or no tail, but yeah. So we're hoping to save the tail. And Oliver, we would love to see you with your tail waving joyfully like it has on so many occasions as you're like running across a grassy field. I mean, I just can't wait for that day to come again because right now it's all bandaged up. And he doesn't love the bandages, so that's why he has to wear either the cone of shame, which is what he wore last night when he was in bed, or um, this thing, the Kong, and Kong is not sponsoring us, <laughs> the Kong Cloud. Now the Kong Cloud, um, he's wearing it right now. Um, he can actually lick his paw. You can see like his, he could lick that paw without much problem. So he could lick this paw too. Um, by the way, I don't know if you noticed, this, 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 this um, paw is completely fine. This leg's completely fine. This little spot here is just where they put the IV in. So they had to shave a little bit of his fur, but that one is completely fine. Um, so he can, he can lick it. Um, and we would only leave him with the Kong cloud on if we could supervise him to make sure that he's not pulling the bandage off. Uh, it's pretty tightly bandaged right now. So um, it would take him a, a couple minutes to pull it off. Uh, but at night when we're sleeping, we have to put the cone of shame on because obviously he could wake up in the middle of the night and then it, it would be half an hour before we noticed anything had, had happened. We'd wake up in the morning and there'd be suddenly this bandage left on the bed and he'd be so proud of himself. But Oliver, we really, really need that bandage to stay on while you're getting better. All right, so thank you everyone for all your love and support. Oliver is doing completely fine. Yeah, the anesthesia was, uh, he was a bit groggy. He's still a little bit groggy from the anesthesia, um, but he's recovering great. Uh, he doesn't seem to be in any pain. He's just sleeping and eating totally normally. And we're just waiting then for this, both of these wounds to heal and then he'll be back to normal. So we will post again on Monday after he's gonna go to the vet on Monday to get this bandage removed. And there, he'll, there will still be sutures there. So we'll still have to be careful and make sure that he's wearing the cone of shame so he doesn't pull out the sutures. But this paw should recover pretty quickly and we'll give you an update on how he is doing then. So that was a long video and Oliver's like, okay, can we have some more food now? It is almost time for lunch. So Oliver, let's have some lunch. You can, you can actually eat and you can actually eat and drink with the Kong cloud, which is great because the, uh, the cone of shame, you can't really eat and drink with. So yeah, well, we're actually gonna take this off while you're eating. Come on, let's go have some lunch. So thanks everyone for all your support and we will definitely keep you posted about how Oliver's doing during his recovery. Thank you.